Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to be here. Very happy. And, well, most of us, um, we all have healthcare anyway. Healthcare is something everyone has. And sometime last year, I, I was in I think South Africa, and I was trying to talk with some, a lady, she works with World Health Organization. And then, while we were discussing, she told me she actually came into South Africa to have a discussion on um, why medical doctors are not using, they have a device which is fully funded by a World Health Organization. And this device is meant to, you know, kind of promote healthcare practice. And, but for some reasons, um, the healthcare professionals were not using this device. And they are in South Africa then to ask why. And um, when we were talking, I told her how I work on AI and we talked about blockchain. And she told me, what? These guys are not using a simple device like this. And they're talking about AI, blockchain, big data. She was like, oh no, uh -uh. I mean, <laughs> this, this will be hard. And just yesterday, I already this morning, uh, when, when I came in, I was talking with a woman. She actually, she's here in Kenya to have a meeting with one of the ministers, actually in petroleum anyway. So when we are talking, she told me what, you know, we already, I already know what she does. And when I told her I'm working on, you know, Africa AI, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? And personally, I was a bit of shocked. Now, this is a lady, she's, she's, she's you know, the, her position in the organization she's working in is really huge. But how come she, she, she has no knowledge about AI? And that got me thinking. And I'm sure most of us, you know, may have some similar experience trying to talk about AI in Africa and perhaps elsewhere. And I can assure you, if your challenge, I mean, if whatever challenge you're having talking about AI, we have almost like 10x of that talking about AI in healthcare. But um, as it stands, healthcare is something all of us have, like I said. And I don't know, let me, I'm sorry, how many of us here actually working in healthcare, like core healthcare, okay? Good, good, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing. So, but we are not trying to convert all of us to work in healthcare. But um, what I might try to say is that um, healthcare is a challenge for each and every one of us. So it doesn't matter where you are. Feel free to share what you have for people who working in healthcare. Whatever knowledge you have, especially here in Africa, we need to do a lot to improve healthcare. And. Um, I don't know, some of us may have seen this man before now. The, the other bird is asking, where do you think we are headed? And the other guy was like, well, um, I want to go get some fries. And the other guy said, no, 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 I'm talking like the big picture, you know, what is the community lot of consciousness? <laughs> and the other guy says, no, I want to go get some fries. And um, here, I think all of us are represented here. And in life, no matter how, no matter where you are, growth and development, I think, is a function of how well you think about the immediate needs, and then also consider the big picture. I must say, I was having a, con a conversation, you know, back in the room now. One of the challenges we need to do in Africa is to encourage people to think beyond our daily bread. It's unfortunate, but most people in the government, we talk about you know, how things are working and how things are not working. The challenge is most people are more interested in their stomach. They just want to consume, which is not bad. It's an important thing. But the challenge is why we th think about some of these mundane you know, basic things. It's also important to think about the big picture, to talk about other important things beyond our daily bread. We'll talk more about that later. So for us at Insilico, one of the things we ask ourselves is what is important in life. That's like leading from what I just said now. I'm not pretending we are doing important thing ourselves, but um, we keep asking ourselves the question, what is important in life? How is what we are doing helping to make things better? Most of us here are, most of us are here talking about AI. And um, for me, I, and for many people, most of these things are basically tools. 
I think when you talk about tech, a lot of people, we have this sort of misconception, like when you see a particular technology, you want to focus on it, you want to work on it. And at times we lose focus of the fact that these things are basically tools. It doesn't matter what it is. These are tools to solve problems and most importantly, to make things better. So I want to invite each and every one of us as we move along to think about what you are doing and um, really consider how important it is, not just doing tech for tech's sake. And for us, we are working in healthcare, like I said, and basically one of the things we are trying to do is to kind of fast track drug development. Basically, we are trying to build a unique blend of digital medicine, chemistry, and biology. And the reason is, most of the people who work in um, pharma, for instance, most of them are, you know, there's this disconnect. So we are like, how do we make a, have a, a hub, more like a hub, where people from different backgrounds can come together and learn together and drive innovations together. So one of the things we are trying to do is encourage AI scientists, empower them with tools of biology and chemistry so that they can help solve problems we have in pharma. Now, we are, well, you know, we are led by a group of scientists, led by um, Alex. Alex, um, you know, he's worked in a lot of things in AI and aging and stuff. But we also have a lot of people working in almost how many countries? Now, I think about seven countries all over the world doing a, lot of, a whole lot of things in AI and pharma and beyond. Now, talking about AI in pharma, one of the things we can easily try to do is to bring down the costs of pharmaceutical development and by extension, the cost of healthcare. One of the challenges we have is most drug molecules don't fail fast. What I mean, they don't fail fast. And the thing is, we carry a lot of junk, I'll call them junk, here. So these are basically the preclinical, preclinical trials. So all these are molecules. And most people spend a lot of money working on things that are bound to fail. Things that are bound to fail. And now we asked, can we use some tools of technology, perhaps AI, and perhaps, you know, possibly bring down the cost of drug development? And how do we do that? It's easy. It's like trying to, um, in healthcare, we work on two basic bases, like, we're trying to look for needle in a haystack, needle in a haystack. And then the other thing is trying to generate needles. So what we do with AI is basically try to find a way to limit the number of drugs or molecules people work on so that rather than working on all these molecules that are bound to fail, we can work on a handful that are likely to succeed. And our goal is to sort of bring down the things that could take perhaps three years, we can do them in a matter of months using technology. And that is happening right now. Now, in Africa, we have a lot of companies, a lot of countries, you know, who hardly make any single original contribution to pharma. And in Africa, we have a lot of healthcare challenges. How about we use some of these technologies to try to develop drugs and solve our African needs? And I'm going to show you right now. Perhaps most of us may not be aware that over 70% of all the healthcare products used in Africa are imported from other parts of the world. Well, the Challenge is not just about importing over 70% of our products. The challenge is, for me, most importantly, is that every year, Africa kind of, a lot of graduates leave our in, uh, academic institutions. We are with all these people working. Most of them, talented people, they end up working in areas outside of healthcare. How about we use AI to move from or forward so that we can employ people? and not just employ people, but also solve our healthcare challenges. I think I'll be faster moving forward. <laughs> okay, so this is basically how we do what we do. We work a lot with um, generative adversarial networks. Right now, we're also working with reinforcement learning. So basically, you have all these drugs and diseases, you know, in a database. Then you work on them, develop deep learning, transmission response scoring. 
deep learning chemistry based scoring engine, and at the end of the day, we'll be able to generate molecules that will work better. And this is basically how it works. Deep learning target pathway pipelines, deep learning molecule pipelines, deep learning predictors. The basic the idea is marry all these things, know a lot about diseases, know a lot about the body, know a lot about our targets, and be able to move drug discovery faster. Okay. And this is basically some of the things we are doing, trying to bring the pharmaceutical and consumer industries. You can check them out, pharma.ai, young.ai, agent.ai, and, and all that. I think the thing is, we are doing a lot of things that are important for healthcare, and we are happy. But beyond um, drug development, there are a bunch of areas where AI and robotics are helping in healthcare. Most of us are aware of the, all the variables, the training, the research, where we work a lot on, and then the diagnosis. This year, we are making most of our improvements, especially in the image recognition, we are things where AI is actually kind of beating radiologists in identifying images and doing diagnosis. Okay, now I will talk a little bit about data, because that's a very important thing, a very important issue in healthcare. Right now, most of us may be aware about the issue of AI being biased. Yeah, you may have heard about it. And recently there was this publication, some of us may have read about it, about AI, um, self-driving vehicles, having more challenges, recognizing people with darker skin than people with lighter skin. Hope may, we may have read about the publication. Now the challenge is, for me, I think that it's basically the, the idea that most of the people who work on AI are based in Europe, America, and, so, and all that. And then secondly, it's about having data. And I can encourage all of us here, you, think, you need to think a lot about having representative data in whatever we are doing. For us in healthcare, it's a big issue. Imagine if we develop a drug that works for everybody. Well, human beings are the same everywhere, but for, we have subtle differences. So how, how will it work if we develop a drug using AI and it works for people in Europe and when you come to Africa, it has challenges. So we think a lot about having representative data. And now we worked with a company called Bitfury to, well, we wrote up a paper, you know, that's first of its kind, you know, talking about AI and blockchain. And then we came up with a system called Longenesis. And Longenesis is about trying to make data available, trying to make representative data available. The idea is to help healthcare practitioners, help uh, healthcare systems to contribute data and make the data available for researchers. And one of the things this system could also do is it remunerates people for generating data for healthcare development. So it's kind of twofold. You contribute your data to move healthcare forward and make better products for yourself. And at the same time, you get some incentives for the data you generate, which we think is a good thing for universal health coverage. And then we came up with a way to value data and to convert big data to our price data, have combination value of data and a term value of data. And what are the data we're talking about? We're talking about almost every data in the human body, everything. Some people might be worried about how does the picture come, <laughs> how will uh, maybe your social media feed, what's the relationship between your social media feed and drug development or aging research? Well, it turns out there is a lot of relation, a lot of connection between all these things. So we basically work with every human life data, and that's one of the things the um, longevity system helps to kind of aggregate and make available for developers. So what will it achieve for everybody? Build economy for personal data interchange, give data back to patients, unlock the value of data, move personalized, personalized medicine forward of course, new, new biomedical insights. And who will be participating and who will be benefiting? Everybody, pharmaceutical companies, contract research organizations, almost everybody, insurance companies, regulators like FDA, private companies, and universities, everybody, hospitals, patients. So these are the people we are trying to help with some of the things we are building. And before we go, we now come back to this. I want us to think a lot about what we are doing as people working in AI. And um, I'll, make it, I'll, make, uh, I'll point out something. Let's try to, as developers, as people who are into this field, work hard to have a basic and fundamental understanding about AI. Believe you me, a lot of people working in AI, are, you know, they confuse a lot of things. And I, some time ago, I was talking with a PhD in artificial intelligence, where we were like talking, and I said, perhaps every data, digital data, whatever you call it, is information. And he was like, no, it's from data you get information and, and all that. 
But the point is, whatever you call it, no matter the info data you have, whether it's your genomic, genomic, uh, genomic information, whether it's the, your blood test, everything, all of them are fundamentally information. And that's like talking about data. So beyond that, I would encourage us to have a deeper understanding about what we are trying to work on, think up a lot about how it's important and how you can help to move the world forward. Don't just work on AI or work on these technologies for working sake. Think about how you can use it to solve problems and um, most importantly, make things better for everybody. Thank you so much. That somebody is addressing healthcare with AI. Thank you very much for that. Uh, but uh, the, throughout the presentation, and you talked about data and information, I saw a lot of data. What I would like now is information about where you've been using and successful use cases for AI in healthcare. Okay. Well, uh, we have a very short time, but fundamentally, we've currently they're helping to develop drugs for a lot of companies, including the ones you know, like GSK and so forth and so on. You know. We basically work on two things, aging research, then we also work on drug development. So a lot of companies work with us, we help, we help them to fast track their research, provide them with molecules we generated in house, and also help them to narrow down their own developments. So it's actually working now. And even for the system I talked about, Longenesis, is actually being used now by a company called Nebula Genomics. It's based out of Harvard. So the idea, they actually into genomic testing. People send in their information, they test your genomic information, and then send it back to you. So the thing is, the system now makes it possible for them to share those results with the research community and then be compensated. So it's still a lot of back end. There is not really... It's not going to directly to the consumer of healthcare. Right now, we have a, comp we have a company that is actually we're selling our products. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. I mean, companies are using our molecules, as I'm talking Yeah, so you. that's what I'm saying. It's still a lot of back-end. For yeah. the industry, industrial back-end, it's not gone to the consumer of healthcare services directly. I mean, I, I mean, I mean the normal person here who is directly affected by AI or in diagnosis mm -hmm. and treatment. Mm -hmm. It's uh, still a lot in the back end of yeah. industry. Yeah, basically almost everything, AI and healthcare, most of them are still like on the pilot stage, to be honest. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that yeah, because so. uh, like you said, uh, this is clinical medicine. I w I'm more like that bird who says, I'm called I'm sure, <laughs> you have something to do with the fries on the other side. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ernius.